So a little bit of the work is that um, what happens as you wake up is you allow yourself to know more, to feel more, to see more, to hear more. Um, so let's just give a few examples. So um, what I see happening a lot is that somebody, families get together and uh, somebody says something and it's a trigger for someone else in the family. And they start to fight or they argue or they have a standoff or whatever. Um, as you evolve and, and you get into this whole question of uh, what does is, what is an evolved person say, do, how do they respond, etc. Um, the what actually has to happen is you have to be able to listen to that trigger and then go inside yourself and ask why is that a trigger where did that trigger come from how does how is it that I had never heard that trigger before I just got upset and didn't even know really what upset me just the person they blame the person not the trigger that you hold in yourself and so you have to go inside and you have to dig around and you have to go back to the time and the place where you first had that trigger or you first felt bad. Typically it's um, something that you feel you're deficient in and somebody else is pointing out. And instead of saying with a sense of humor, yeah, you're really right. You know, do you have any of that I could buy? You know, could I buy a sense of humor? Could I buy some more compassion? Do you, you have any extra that I can borrow? Um, or any sensitivity or what? Instead of playing with that, we get all defensive. And, and we end up fighting and arguing over something that doesn't need to be fought over. And so doing the work is um, loosening up figuring out why that's a trigger and and if it's an accusation about yourself is it true if it's true what are you going to do about it if it's not true how are you going to change that person's perception so that's what i mean by the work it has to be done otherwise every single thing is going to upset somebody and you don't people don't know how to use their voice they don't know how to um, use their tone of voice they don't have a vocabulary that they can um, use different words you know some people's uh, vocabulary amounts to f u c k or ass you're an asshole or or some other thing and it's like okay you know can we be a little classier here do we have to get into that kind of, of crappy language um, that just we have to do the work so that's some of it let me just say that when you do the work the the first maybe the couple years even but the first few times you'll try some different response 99% of the time it's not going to work and so people will say i tried that it didn't work and i'm like how many times did you try it and they're like well i said it once and i just i have to laugh it's like uh-huh so you think you're just going to wave your magic wand of words and the person is going to change you have to demonstrate with your body your body language your attitude your response and your follow-up behavior, everything that you are trying to make happen. You have to demonstrate it, which teaches the other person, oh, you know, they've changed. <laughs> They're different. And, and so you have to begin to live it. You can't just use a few words and think that that's a magic wand and the person is going to stop what they're saying or stop what they're doing. And most people have to hear something, a minimum, of three times, sometimes four or five or six times, before they hear it and kind of it gets their attention and they realize, oh, you know, what what what's that mean? What well, what is he saying? What does she mean? That kind of thing. Um, and I just chuckle at people who say, Well, I said it once ten years ago. <laughs> so, okay, that's not enough. So doing the work is um, having to do it again and again and again until you live it.
you mentioned at some point that when you start to awaken, that other, other senses start to, to wake up as well. In other words, you start to hear things and you perhaps start to hear even uh, simple things of your direct environment. You start to hear what people are actually thinking and saying about you. You start right. to um, even hear perhaps that you mentioned that you would hear things that are going on in the world or situations. And a lot of it is very, uh, very difficult to deal with. And if you don't have that maturity that you did the first steps of the work, imagining if you yeah we become more evolved but then we have to deal with all so that's like a more of another step but it's um very it's not so easy to handle if you could really read people's like not read people's mind but if the if it was there and you could see it i mean that's that's work too yeah yeah it really is and i think um it would maybe be important to say that quite often when children or teens wake up and they begin to hear those voices and have those visions and they tell their parents. Um, the parents, especially if they're very religious, oh my, they, they end up dragging that child to a psychiatrist and getting pills and maybe putting them in a, a hospital because they are, quote unquote, um, hearing voices and therefore insane. And that is tragic because that the teen years are when we are supposed to wake up and we and we're so ignorant as a as a civilization about the normal wake up times that everybody's delayed i was 31 um before i actually woke up and um that and so we have this whole uh, culture that says you will fit in you will conform and if you don't you can go in that hospital and we're gonna feed you full of drugs and make sure that you um, don't disturb our perception of reality that's tragic but it's it must be still something to work for yourself when you start to hear things and you know the person saying hey yeah everything's good oh you're so ugly and man why do you keep talking like that all the time what's that just i like to hear like i'm saying something very silly just to give an example but it's still sometimes you know we're very um susceptible not mm -hmm. even reading other people's minds imagine if you could hear what people are actually thinking my god some of us would just go mad yeah it's very difficult i cannot even begin to communicate how difficult it is just the actual um timing of what you say and and knowing whether or not you actually heard that with your physical ear whether they actually said that or whether you just heard that um it's like what do i respond to <laughs> what do i dare open my mouth and you have to um one of the things that i think is really essential um you just triggered a thought when you made this statement about oh you're so ugly um, if the child has not heard from the parents, both parents or parent or grandmother or a significant adult in their life, that they are beautiful and that they are loved and they are um, amazing or whatever it is, uh, then if they w begin to hear voices and the voices are ugly, then they don't have any counterbalance for that. And that is dangerous. That's when you get kids who succumb to those ugly voices and who begin to do things like cut themselves, hurt themselves, and uh, do things that cause them to be hospitalized. So it's really important for children to hear that they did a good job or that they are beautiful or that they are uh, accomplished in some way or graceful or something that they can hang on to as they go through the difficult times in life and very few people are willing to give that kind of compliment we're all busy pointing out everybody's faults and um, trying to fix them I'm just wishing so much lately that we could look at one another and see the good side hear the good uh, approach uh, feel the feel good about what that person is trying to do, even if they're clumsy about it or awkward about it. We need to recognize one another. In one of the interviews you say, I know how this will end. Yeah. In this video you mentioned while talking briefly about a shift in the population and the resulting spiritual emergency, you say along the lines of, come on now, come on, let's, let's move it. We can do this. I know how this will end. Um, yeah. 
What do you mean by that? You know how this will end. How, how do you know how this will end? Because I have seen too many people, I've coached too many people through spiritual emergency, and I know that the end is beautiful. I know it. It's astounding. Even when I think, oh, <laughs> I, I wonder if we're going to make it, then there'll be something that happens that is phenomenal. Um, one of the people, and I don't, we might have talked about this once before, but a um, young woman who had a full blown awake, awakening uh, was convinced, absolutely convinced, that Satan had gotten hold of her. And we worked back and forth for I don't know how many months and months and months. And, um, and she uh, wasn't, she just kept insisting that this was the case and, and that was the devil. And I was like, no, it's not. This is, these are other voices of the self. And uh, we, I mean, I don't want to get into a lot of specifics, but um, then I didn't hear from her for a while. And I thought, I hope she hasn't committed suicide because she was on the edge. And, and then all of a sudden, I get this beautiful letter from her and it basically said, I got it. <laughs> I got it. You were, you were right. It's that it was just this part of the waking up process. Other people have said the same thing. I'm sure it's the devil because of the kind of consciousness that they have because of the things that they can see that frighten them because of the kinds of motions that the body makes, sometimes the energy takes over the body and moves it in a way that that individual would never be able to move and scares the daylights out of them. And, and so they think they're possessed. And that kind of thing, it, those are some pitfalls that happen. <laughs> um, aside from the fact that the Typically, the waking up process brings you face to face with whatever isn't working. So if it's a husband and wife relationship and that's going well and all of a sudden one wakes up and the other one doesn't, the one that wakes up ends up growing right on past the one who didn't wake up and the one who didn't wake up becomes more and more frightened and critical and um, complaining and they get further and further apart and pretty soon they come apart um, and th then often people who wake up are so stunned by the things they can do and know sometimes they show off inappropriately and scare everybody around them uh, sometimes they brag or they get off into some cult kind of thinking that is just not helpful and doesn't add to any clarity, doesn't bring any clarity, doesn't bring any wisdom. It's, it's all a power trip. It's an ego trip. And so that can happen. And yet, when you work your way through and you know what's happening and you know what the stages are, because um, when you wake up, you typically go back to stage one, sensory motor. And you, you start seeing and hearing everything brand new, just like you did when you were born up until you were two years old. And you're like, what, what sort of place am I in? What's this? And you're testing everything and you're, you know, putting it in your mouth and um, all of that is happening. When you get past that stage and, and you, um, you know, you start into concrete operations or one of those other stages, um, you go through all those stages all over again. It's like being born again. And if, if you have good guidance or you have some inner instinct that you're listening to, then the outcome is a beautiful, wise, creative, powerful, and peaceful person or civilization. That's, the, that's what I know is the end state. And, and you come in, I want people to come into their power and, and be able to use that power because it's the power to stand in your truth and, and to be gentle and to be wise. And yes, if you, sometimes you have to, you know, my whole life fell apart. I lost the man, I lost the house, I lost the kids, I lost the furniture, I lost everything. Why was I fighting that? 
because I didn't want to lose any of that. Everybody else get, that gets, everybody who gets into a spiritual emergency is facing the loss of everything, everything that was familiar, and they don't want to deal with it. And so they hang on and they fight and they cry and they worry and they stress and they lose sleep, etc. And finally, they're forced to face the fact that this isn't going to work. Hanging on isn't going to work. And at that point, the spirit with which they're going to move forward begins to change. That, that is what has to happen. So that is what the ending is after you go through that. It's sometimes, um, what's his name, um, talked about the hero's journey. Same thing. We in the United States, in England, in Norway and Sweden, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Italy, um, all of those countries, Australia, we're on the hero's journey. And we have a thousand years of SHIT to shovel out, or in this case, maybe 70 years, <laughs> which is still a lot of, of crap. And, um, and we don't want to do the work. We don't want to sort out the good from the bad. We don't want to make those kinds of judgment calls. We have to. Um, I tell people, no, don't judge. But then there comes a point, especially during the spiritual emergency, when you will have to decide. And, and most people are going to do that on the basis of some kind of judgment. And, and you have to. And so there's the shoveling out. And then there's the sorting, you know, of what's left. And... And then there's the, um, the need to be brave, to move forward into the world and be this little light or carry this little candle of light and, um, and stand in your truth and be square, fair and square with everybody around you, especially yourself. The hero's journey is Joseph Campbell, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so you just described a, a very individual um, an experience of, of a spiritual emergency for somebody who has a, a quite a specifically a kundalini experience. But when we're talking about the civilization right now, most of us will not experience such a wide kundalini experience necessarily. No, no. No, no. The teen, every teen who gets okay. to be 14 goes through that same kind of spiritual emergency. They begin to move out into the world. They see how other people do things. All of a sudden, after being in this cooped up house for however many years, uh, with their parents and their siblings, now they're out in the world and they have some freedom. Same kind of spiritual emergency and they fight their parents tooth and nail. <laughs> and, and everybody struggles. Our civilization is going to go through the same thing. What are we going to have to let go of? We're going to have to let go of our old routines, our old attitudes, our old lifestyle, our old paychecks, our old houses, our old friends and family who don't want to grow and mature with us. Very painful. When you said that you know how this will end, and you talked about it from a perspective of being around individuals here and at this time in this lifetime, but have you witnessed in other civilizations or, or that you have memories of, of the result of a spiritual emergency? Do you have also yeah. some recall of that? Yeah. Yes, I do.